Thank you, Evan. Trap miner Larry Merrick of the Hecla Mining Company is declared dead by company officials. Rescues were still hoping that after nine days, Merrick would still be alive after a mine collapse. The rescue team recovered Merrick's body Sunday afternoon. Merrick was a 30-year-old veteran in the mining industry and will be missed by his friends and family. All mining operations have been suspended at Lucky Friday Mine, and the Hecla Mining Company has not announced when operations will resume. The University of Washington names Michael Young to be its new president. Young has been president of the University of Utah since 2004, and prior to that was dean of George Washington University since 1998. Chairman of the UW Board of Regents Herb Simmons says Young comes to the school with a remarkable range of experience in law, government, and higher education. Young is replacing Mark Emmett, who resigned to be the NC2A president. WSU junior guard Clay Thompson announced today that he will declare for the NBA draft. Thompson will not hire an agent at this time, which allows him to maintain his NCAA eligibility. He ranks third in WSU career scoring, and despite the chance to become WSU's leading scorer, he says he couldn't turn down the chance to play in the NBA. It, yeah, I, I mean, that would always been nice, but um, like I said before, the NBA's been my dream, and I think I'm in a good situation to go and have a chance to fulfill that dream, and um, if I just keep working hard and um, keep my head on straight, I think I'll be good. But um, that would have been great to set all these records at WSU, but um, uh, I'll still come away here with uh, just a great feeling and not, not really having uh, any regrets or anything. Thompson says he has several workouts with NBA teams in the upcoming weeks, starting on April 28th. He has until May 8th to withdraw from the draft and come back to WSU. Short surveys, which were passed out on all the buses last month, have now been analyzed by Pullman Transit. These surveys have given Pullman Transit some basic information about what riders think about their system. For the most part, people want the buses to become more reliable. The bus is never on time, so uh, one time I was walking up to the bus a couple minutes late because I thought I had some time and uh, I, missed, I missed the bus because I was counting on it to be late and it wasn't late this one time. Missing the bus was more than inconvenient for Travis, making him late for an exam. Pullman Transit understands why people feel the system isn't as reliable as it could be, but it's hard with a 300,000 rider increase from last year's 1.2 million. The Transit Center would like to improve the overpopulated J route by adding more buses. It's hard to, you know, stop and pick up people and let people off and pick up people and let people off and maintain that 30-minute schedule that it has. So we've got some ideas and, yeah, they may include more service, but we're not we're not 100% certain what we're going to do. The major problem with all of these ideas being thrown out by transit staff is a lack of funding. We need more money, but there just isn't any more money to be had. I mean, nobody's got extra cash to throw into the transit system. The survey did show a positive response toward the bus drivers. Our drivers are doing a real good job of communicating with the passengers. Drivers have got a lot of accolades that I haven't seen before. You know, it just tells me we've got the right people doing the right job out there. The Pullman Transit is striving to improve its services by next fall. But with more riders and less money, the transit system might only get a Band-Aid fix. For Cable 8 News, I'm Clayton Bush. Will this cloudy weather stick around for the upcoming weekend, or will Pullman have some fun in the sun? I'm Clayton Bush, and I'll have the weather for you after the break. Welcome back. Now, we had some cloudy weather today with a high of 50 degrees and winds coming from the west-southwest at 13 miles per hour. Now, let's look at tonight. Now, tonight we're going to have mostly cloudy weather with a low of 34 degrees, but winds are going to come from the south-southwest at 12 miles per hour. Now, looking on to tomorrow, tomorrow again will be mostly cloudy with a high of 53 degrees. Now, the sun is going to rise at 541 a.m. and set at 753 p.m., and winds are going to be coming in at 9 miles per hour. Now let's look at the state map. Now we saw some similar weather in our state to Spokane, except it was kind of raining in Spokane today, and Wenatchee saw a little bit of sun in 61 degrees. Now looking at the other part of our state, the west side, we had a high of 56 degrees in Seattle and Vancouver, and it was just mostly cloudy. Now looking at the five-day forecast, we're actually going to have not a very good weekend this weekend. We're going to have some rain on Friday, but the sun will kind of poke in on Saturday and Sunday. There will be a high of 50 degrees, and on Monday we'll have a 51 degrees with clouds and winds coming from the southwest at 13 miles an hour. Now let's send it back to you guys at the desk. The school is excited to finally get these coaches out of their wooden desks and into a warm press box. 
For Cable 8 News, I'm Clayton Bush. UConn beat Butler last night 53 to 41. The Huskies played fantastic defense, holding Butler to the lowest shooting percentage in championship history, a record previously held by the Cougs. The game was tight throughout the first half before UConn took over in the second half. The tournament's most outstanding player, Kemba Walker, led the Huskies with 16 points and may enter the NBA draft as a junior. 